Hi there, it's John Pushkar. I'm here today with another episode where I hope to pass on some very important information about safety in the world of industrial fuels and combustion systems. Today's episode is all about that little leak, that innocent little corroded piece of pipe, that little drip that you walk by every day, that little wisp of steam coming out of a set of flanges or the bonnet of a valve. Today I want to show you how that's something that you should stop ignoring, something that you should address immediately. I want to talk about some situations where that little leak turned into catastrophic death for a number of people. As is the case with many of my episodes, today comes to us from a learning experience that took lives. On April 3rd of 2017 at the Loy Lang Box Company, just such an incident occurred. A drip that had been noticed coming out of a 2,000 pound steel tank was to be repaired in just a couple of days. The facility was operating one more Saturday before a repair was scheduled to be made the following week. That repair day never came. Upon starting up the equipment, this 2,000 pound, 20 foot or so long pressure vessel launched through the ceiling of the facility at 125 miles an hour. It took the life of the maintenance man there before it came crashing down on the roof of the faultless linen company, some 650 feet away. There, it took three more lives. There was a husband and wife sitting in the human resources department, filling out a job application for their first day at work. I was an expert in this case for Jamie Boak, the plaintiff's attorney, who ended up settling the case for over $47 million. And it's not just about leaking pressure vessels. I'm going to also tell you about a very innocent little drip causing the evacuation of 15,000 people and costing millions of dollars in repairs. Want to know how to take some steps to avoid this kind of thing happening at your facility? Keep watching. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. We wonder every day, is it just a nuisance? Do I worry about somebody tripping and falling in that little puddle in the floor? Or is it something that could take someone's life? When it comes to leak from piping and pressure vessel systems, you need to assess the risks. Of course, the risks go up dramatically when we're talking about compressible gases at high pressures. You can store a whole lot of energy with compressible gases. Things like compressed air, nitrogen, steam, natural gas, they can be deadly if a pressure vessel or piping system suddenly comes apart. To evaluate the risks, you need to know about mechanical integrity programs, you need to know about piping system failure modes, and you need to know about non-destructive testing. There's some very important lessons for you to learn about piping integrity and failure modes from Module 14 of the Prescient Technical Services Online School. Here you'll see some of the very basics regarding mechanical integrity programs and failure modes for piping systems. It's a great start if you don't have a lot of this in your background. I'm also going to provide you with the link about the Chevron Richmond refinery fire that happened in 2012. This is a horrible situation that occurred from someone walking around and just noticing a puddle on the ground under some piping. Again, both very powerful learning sessions for you. I hope you enjoy them. And again, thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully there's something here that saves your life. Welcome to module 14, where we're gonna discuss piping integrity basics. We're mostly gonna focus on steam and condensate piping although many of these principles will also apply to fuel gas and flammable gas piping. This is not an exhaustive course on mechanical integrity. That's a topic that I suggest you look into if piping integrity is part of what you do. 
This is instead meant to be kind of an overall awareness module that will give you some understanding of some of the failure mechanisms that are going on out there as you interface with steam piping systems, fuel piping systems, and mechanical equipment in general. I've broken this down into six steps that we'll go through. We'll first discuss some of the basic elements of mechanical integrity, erosion, corrosion, cracking, weld defects, and material defects. We'll start with a look at the general concept of mechanical integrity. Some of the reasons that piping systems fail, I've already discussed, but they also include things like inadequate design, the selection of materials and the selection of fittings and piping materials and grades of piping, improper loadings, meaning failures of support systems, thermal-related issues, each of these and combinations of all of these things can be very complex to analyze. There are a number of documents in place that can help you. There's API 570, the American Petroleum Institute Piping Inspection Code for in-service inspection of piping, rating, repair, and alteration of piping systems. It's not really written for steam piping, but many of the concepts apply. There's OSHA 1910.119, the Process Safety Management Standard, which has many mechanical integrity requirements. A great place to look if you're just starting off with one of these programs. And by the way, if you have a PSM plant, you should have someone who's deeply into mechanical integrity. A PSM plant is a place that OSHA has identified criteria for like having 10,000 pounds of a particular type of chemical in use at that facility. Then there's also ASME B31.1 and B31.3. 31.1 is specifically written for steam and process piping. So again, there's elements that you should understand from all three programs, and I'm going to try to put in some of the elements of these into our discussions that follow. You can't very well assess every piece of piping every day in real time. So you have to understand risks. Risks are all about probability and consequences. It's important to look at things like aging of piping systems. Piping that has moved that you've noticed is no longer in the same place, maybe from water hammer. Places where there have been previous failures where systems have started and stopped frequently and have been in service this way for long periods of time, where you see exterior corrosion is evident or there's under-insulation corrosion, slight leaks maybe from pinholes that could indicate oxygen pitting. Maybe there's welds that just don't look like stacked dimes that aren't very neat and they were never documented. Maybe there's high velocities. Maybe you're very close to the boiler. Maybe there's occasional water hammer. Maybe these are very high temperature, high pressure systems. Maybe there's a fitting nearby or an injection point or a nozzle or a dead leg that sits idle for long periods of time. All of those impact the probability of failure. Then there's consequence issues like it's inside a building where maybe there's high traffic or people that are resonant. Maybe it's very high pressure. Maybe access is very difficult and you can't get to a valve to shut something off. Maybe you know that isolation valves are likely not to work. Or maybe there are systems that serve a very critical need. All of risk management and risk assessment is considering these probabilities and more and these consequences and more. Once you understand these, you need then to do a process hazard analysis where you're looking to evaluate possible scenarios for failures. You're looking to understand and quantify to the best of your ability what the probabilities are and what those consequences are. And then you put them into a risk matrix like I'm showing you here. You understand the ones that have the most severe impact and you develop programs then to abate or mitigate, which means you're gonna to try to reduce probabilities or you're gonna reduce consequences or both. How do you do this? 
You do this possibly with NDT, non-destructive testing evaluations. You determine the frequency and scope of these evaluations, and you embark on a plan where you manage the mitigation steps so that you're working with risk levels that you can live with. Neither Prescient Technical Services, Inc. or John R. Pushkar, the presenter and author of this work, warrant or represent expressly or by implication the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use and misuse. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or coworkers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prescient Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information. I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe in the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day.